All right, going to do a real quick video here, just kind of a shocking piece of information. And that is that uh, atheism is actually older than Christianity, according to the Bible. Did you know that? For all the atheists out there, that you're screaming and throwing a fit right now and typing your comment, we don't believe in the Bible, we don't believe in the Bible. I, I know that, I know that. But let's just look at the Bible for just logical, just thinking here for a minute, okay? Just open your mind up just for a little bit. Okay, then you can close it again. Just real quick. All right. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. It's the first time the word Christians appears in the entire Bible. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Okay. So Christianity started in the first century AD. Right? What about atheism? Is there any mention of atheism in the King James Bible before Christians showed up? The answer to that is yes. Psalm 14. I'm, you know, oh, I just, I, this is ridiculous. You're, you're a book of lies. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I've dealt with atheists for year, I, years and years and years. I understand. I understand. Okay, but you see, atheism is teaching. One of the main tenets of atheism is that we have more science than they did back in the past when we had all we had was just superstitious beliefs that come from the fairy tale book here that I'm holding in my hands, this Bible that's just ignorant people back in the Dark Ages believed in, even though it was taken from them in the Dark Ages. But we won't talk about that. But, you know, just pagan, or not pagan, but uh, uh, superstitious religious people believe the Bible, and modern science has proved that God doesn't exist. That's what atheism is. I know your stance, but I'm going to show you that that's not true. Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3. The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. You say, well, I find that offensive. Why? Why? If this is just a book of fairy tales, why do you get offended at it? Seems kind of funny, doesn't it? I mean, if this is just, you know, Bronze Age, you know, whatever they call it, you know, stuff like this. Just this old book, and it's stupid that people would even think of it as being serious anymore. Why would you get offended at something that's written about your beliefs like this? And uh, did these people, the ones that said there is no God, way back there, you know, some people say this, the book of Psalms was written maybe 500 to 1,000 years before Jesus Christ showed up on the earth, before Christianity got started, you know, Let's just say, we'll, just, we'll go really, really lenient here. 500 years before Jesus Christ showed up. You can squabble about the, or the uh, dates back and forth. 500 years before Jesus showed up, people were saying there is no God. But it was modern science that taught you to say that there is no God. Right? Sure. Right. Psalm 53 Psalm 53, verses 1 through 3. It's repeated again. The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Notice it doesn't say seek organized religion. Seek God. Have you really truly sought God apart from organized religion, apart from church buildings and Christian upbringings and stuff like this. And I attended a church until the time I was in, in high school and then went into college and there I learned the truth of atheism. Have you really sought God? Have you really experienced God? No, you haven't. Verse 3, Every one of them is going back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And I'm going to keep this thing going because I know atheists can't handle a whole lot of this. They go into fits and things and convulsions because they, their sins are being pointed out. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 1 through 2. Here's what atheism is really all about. Through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. A fool 
Who's the Bible classify as fools? Fools say there is no God. Atheists are fools according to the Bible. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. You justify your sins. That's the whole purpose for you finding evidence against the Bible and evidence that makes you believe that there is no God. Because you don't want anybody saying, I'm going to judge you someday for those sins. You have no delight in understanding, but that your heart may discover itself. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. And that's true. You say, well, you just haven't, you, you need to scientifically prove to me that God exists. Why? Are you going to repent of your sins? No, you want to experience God through your intellect, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I like to study different things, and I like to study religion, and I like to study this and things, but I'm an atheist, I'm a proud atheist, and nothing will change that. Mm -hmm. You're a proud atheist because you're proud of your sin. That's the whole thing. And me trying to debate every single little point that you bring up is a waste of my time because you are a fool. You say in your heart there is no God. Why? Because you're trying to justify your sinful life. That's why. And by the way, it says there, he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Talking about a preacher like me. It's interesting because the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I'm trying to get you to fear God and make you understand that you're going to answer for your sins someday. And if you die in your sins, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. And that's not old time hellfire and damnation preaching that we've since gotten away from. Uh-uh. No, that's what the Bible teaches. And you can get a King James Bible and you can read it for yourself and say, yeah, it's what it teaches. Romans chapter 1. You say, well, you're in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we have disagreements with you know the God of the Old Testament. Yeah, 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 I know. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You're not going to be able to go up there and say, well, I, I was deceived by organized religion. and I, I. You can see the proof that God exists by nature out there. You know, oh, no, it's a long process of evolution. So you're insane if you believe evolution. Truly believe evolution theory. You are insane. You have mental problems if you think that everything out in nature came about as a random accident at some time in the past, way back when, matter came from nowhere, apparently, which violates the first law of thermodynamics, and, and it's getting better and better, which violates the second law of thermodynamics. You're violating science with your beliefs in evolution. It's insanity, if you truly believe that. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Look at this one, verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. You're a fool. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. You worship man. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. They become perverts who change the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The Bible has your number. You fit right into those scriptures. You know you do as an atheist. I reject and I reject it. Good, good, good. Good for you. Good for you. Reject it. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Not going to be very long because atheists don't have the brains for long preaching. They just, uh, oh, it's it, I, whatever. Yeah, you come up with your little excuses. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, Perverse, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, 
supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Again, another perfect example or another perfect description of atheism. Questions and strifes of words, doting about questions and think, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? And you answer them and they go on to new questions. You're wasting your time with atheists. Atheists are fools. And that description shows up long before modern science came along. You see, man has always in his heart said, I don't want to believe that there is a God. Why? Because I'm trying to seek an inter intermeddle with all wisdom and stuff, stuff like this so I can understand my own heart and I can say, well, you know, I can reject those things there because I see some issues here that I don't understand and so I'll just call them contradictions and, and all these other things. And unless you can prove to me, I need, I live by science. No one lives by science 100% of the time. That's not true. How can you scientifically prove that somebody loves you? It's a feeling. I fell in love because of science. <laughs> no, it's a feeling. There's a lot of things that are like that. Don't tell me you live 100% by science. You can't. There's a whole lot of stuff that you do based completely on emotion, completely on your feelings. And it's that emotion, those feelings, that make you reject God. Yes, it is. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Evolution is a science falsely so called. It's nonsense. Absolute total nonsense. But I know I've already, you know, you're all you're, you know, writing your comments and whatever else. Let me just tell you something. I'm not, I, I have no. I don't deceive myself into thinking for one minute that I'm going to lead every atheist out there to the Lord. Most of you are on your way to hell. You're going to burn forever. Nothing I can do to stop you. You've committed yourself. Okay? But I'm talking to those of you out there that are agnostic. Right? That those of you that are saying, well, I lean towards atheism because I kind of think that there's, you know, I've been hurt by organized religion and I, I don't really know if God exists or not and I, I have questions. I'm talking more to you. The full-on atheist that's just rejected God that won't hear any truth or anything about the Lord and, and things and, and they're justifying their sins. Bye-bye. See you in hell. Whatever. Well, I won't see you in hell. I'll see you being cast into hell. But here's something that you need to think about. Okay? You want real science. Right? Because that's what I hear. You know, atheists. Prove to me that there is a God. Prove to me that there is a God. Okay. I'm going to give you some real science for the future. See, it's one thing. If this book is a book that comes from God, the creator of the universe, then God being outside of our time, our dimension of time, should be able to tell you what's going to happen in the future. The Bible says we've been given a more sure word of prophecy. This will tell you what's going to happen in the future. How's that for a little science trick for you? You say, well, how could that be science? That's just you know, speculation about what might happen. Okay, but if I tell you what's going to happen according to this book, if this book says this is going to happen eventually, and it happens, and you can test it, observe it, demonstrate it. The Bible said it's going to happen, and it happens right before your eyes. That's science. You see? I'm going to give you four things that the Bible says will happen in the future. Now, if this book is real, if this book is true, if there is a God, then these things are going to happen. If this book is just a book of fairy tales, then your little science is going to save you in the future and these things won't come to pass. Atheism will lead the way into the future and you can just forget about all these things. Okay? Number one, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, that there would be a dramatic increase in earthquakes. Oh, there have always been earthquakes and stuff, and we know that there's our instruments today are more sensitive, so we pick them up. That there's, they're picking up more. It's not that there are more; it's just we pick up more. Uh huh. Sure. Uh, there's more earthquakes today than there ever has been. Buildings that stand over in Narcia, Italy, you have this uh, big, you know, basilica. And I thank the Lord that that thing came down to Saint Benedict, and um, the thing came down here just what a month ago, something like this. Standing for 1,200 years. Big earthquake. Whole, whole village, the whole town just flattened. Looked like a bomb went off. Earthquake. Just these buildings standing for over 1,000 years. 
boom, they go down. Mountain out there in the distance, and they've got a big horizontal crack right through it. Geologists, scientists coming out and saying there's going to be a mega quake someday. Just like the Bible says back in the book of Revelation. So, if the Bible is just a nasty little book of fairy tales and things like this, then uh, science will provide the way to stop the earthquakes. Okay? And I don't mean totally stop every earthquake. I'm saying the increase of earthquakes, don't you worry because your God's science, out there to the atheists, your God's science is going to stop the earthquakes from happening. Okay? All these really, really bad earthquakes. You'll turn it around and lessen the earthquakes. Don't worry. Science is your God. Number two, satellite television. The Bible says that all the world is going to see the bodies of the two witnesses there in Revelation chapter 11, verses 9 through 11. In three and a half days, their bodies, their dead bodies are laying in the streets of Jerusalem and the whole world's going to see their dead bodies. How could a 400-year-old book, let's just say the King James Bible was just completely made up 400 years ago, back and finished in 1611, a little over 400 years actually, 405 years if you want to be specific. Let's just say that this book was just newly written in 1611. How could the whole world have viewed two dead men's bodies in Jerusalem in three and a half days? Hmm? You say, well, how's that science? Well, okay, first of all, it's predicting, it's saying there's going to come a time when people are going to be able to see world events in other countries. Okay? But secondly, I'm going to tell you right now, after the rapture happens and this time of Jacob's trouble gets started, watch and see if two men show up. Moses and Elijah, if you study the whole thing out. If these two guys show up, watch. Watch for them to be killed. And when they're killed, you might want to get a book, King James Bible, and look at Revelation chapter 11 and see what happens. The Bible said satellite television would come about. The whole world will see the dead bodies for three and a half days. And it happened. How about a uh, cashless economy, economy and implantable microchips? Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. Look it up in the King James Bible. No man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. And the mark is in the right hand or in the forehead. And isn't it interesting that all the different world economies, India just came out and said they're scrapping some of their larger denomination bills, you know, I think the 500 and 1,000 uh, rupee or something like that, I forget what the thing is, but they just scrapped some of their currency. Sweden, I saw, is on the brink of becoming a cashless society. A lot of stores will not accept cash anymore. Here in America, I've gone places and they're like, oh, uh, uh, they frown on cash. I've seen places in America where they don't accept cash. I have seen that. We're heading towards a cashless society. Just like this old uh, outdated book, this old archaic book said what happened. Fourth, how about world war? You say, well, that's just, we've always had war and stuff. World war. Revelation chapter 6 verse 4 talks about peace being taken from the earth. A world war, the likes of which this, you know, earth has never seen before. People on earth. World war I, world war II were very, very bad, but technically they were not world wars, okay? There were still countries that didn't get involved in those wars, and there were places in America that you could be and live, and you didn't, wouldn't have even known that the war was going on over in Europe, over in Germany, and the other countries that were involved. So they weren't technically world wars, called world wars, but the Bible says that there's going to come a point in time when peace is taken completely from the earth. See, I can tell you about different things in the Bible that are science, okay, that line up with the rules of science, the laws of science. I can show you those things. But that's not going to convince a lot of atheists. The best thing I can do is tell you what the Bible says is going to happen before it's happened. And say, if you're right, if atheism is right, then this stuff isn't going to happen because this is a book of lies. It's a book of fairy tales. If I'm right and the Bible's right, you're going to see it happen. You want science. That's what I hear. I want to see proof. Show me proof that God exists. Okay, it's coming. 
you will see proof that this King James Bible is God's Word. Or you can get saved today. Not in organized religion, not in church buildings, not in that stuff. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Crying out to God and saying, God, I want to know that you're real. I don't want to be one of those fools in the Old Testament there in the book of Psalms that doesn't seek after God. I want to seek after you. And I don't care what you tell me, I have to give up. I don't care what you, which of my sins you judge. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. But I want to be saved. I want to know about salvation. You can watch our salvation message at the main channel page. There's no pleas for money. There's no joining a church that we have and we need you to help pay the mortgage and things. None of that stuff. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Get a King James Bible. Read it. Check it out. All right. So that's going to be it. I thank you for watching.